Good morning once again, <coughs> everyone. Uh, today, <coughs> we are going to be learning a skill called mindfulness. Mindfulness meditation. Okay, mindfulness meditation. Uh, this is to help you to manage your stress when you have a lot of homework, uh, a lot of deadline. Um, on top of that, you know, some social activities are creeping in and you need to juggle all your um, activities, your schedules together. As you grow older, as you go, go into the next grade, you will find yourself busier and busier. You can only expect this. And one day, just like me and your parents, you will also be going to university. And um, if you learn how to manage stress at um, an early age, like you do, okay, you are going to be um, happier than any other people because. Managing stress means healing yourself emotionally. Okay, we need to heal ourselves emotionally each day. Um, and also, university where I come from, uh, there is a program called Dot B. We have a mindfulness center, also a mindfulness center. Uh, clinical psychologists, neurologists and meditators and also Buddhist monks like me, we work together how to help people reduce their stress. For now, more than um, 370 schools in England and Wales okay, have taken up mindfulness to help them reduce uh, their stress. Is um, a secular form of meditation, if you like. But here, me being a Buddhist monk, okay, in this um, <laughs> robe, uh, you know, uh, you know, there is uh, some Buddhist element in this. <clears throat> um, first, I'll be showing you a clip from the Oxford Mindfulness Center. It's called Dot B. The program is called dot b dot. Okay, this is a dot, and b simply b. The, the name of the program dot b. Dot means full stop. When you are very stressed out, your mind is spinning. You just don't know where you are emotionally. You cannot catch up with yourself. You're overwhelmed by your own emotion. If that happens, it's likely you won't understand the person sitting next to you, your friend. If it happens at home, it's likely that you understand your sibling or your mom and dad. You won't understand what they're saying or they won't understand because you're just being overwhelmed emotionally. At that moment, you need to stop a little while, maybe a minute, 60 seconds exactly, and be, just be present, just connect with yourself, just connect with your emotion, be, breathe, just stop and breathe. A simple technique. <clears throat> Uh, has been there thousands of years. In India, they say 5,000, okay, 5,000 years of Indian history. In terms of Buddhism, it's uh, 2,600 years. This is the technique that people have used, and now there is a scientific evidence of this. So, dot B is the first thing we are going to be learning. After we have seen um, this program, uh, I'm going to introduce you how to actually do it. Okay, and we do 
maybe about four minutes, five minutes meditation. I ask you how long we should be doing. Okay. So I was just really paying attention to someone, I was just like talking to my friend and doing whatever. And then like the second mindfulness class, I actually found it really, really helpful. And I started to use it in day to day life, like my brother, my homework. Once you've done your homework, you just need a break, so you can't just lie down and sleep. It only takes like 10 minutes or two months for still back for your Okay, dot B is the program. And the keyword, what's the keyword from what you have heard now? Mindfulness. In Burmese, we usually call this the deep, the deep tapa, the deep yupa, that sort of thing. Mindfulness comes from that word. Is the um, original word is that that one in S A T I Sati. That's the uh, so the, this is the name of the program. This is the theme mindfulness, and the original word is called Sati. In terms of history, um, in the Buddhist tradition, we trace back to. 2,600 years. <clears throat> now is the time to uh, do some practice. I'm going to be explaining uh, some of the things that you can expect. What we are going to be doing is uh, we are going to be um, combining two activities. Two activities. One is what we call physiological activity. That is physical activity. The second one is psychological activity. So we are going to be um, <clears throat> uniting them. We are going to be um, developing a habit so that these two activities um, don't create any conflict. Okay. Well, the physiological activity is breathing. If we don't breathe, we don't live. So breathing is that important. Okay. Breathing is very important. But usually people just breathe. They take it for granted. And they are not aware if they breathe enough. Breathing is about supplying oxygen to your lung. Sometimes people don't do that because they are so occupied with something else. Sometimes with their phone, sometimes with um, what other people are doing, not what they are doing. They get distracted easily. So here, when we get distracted, that's the psychological part. Okay? Not the physiological part anymore. Is about attention. Is about attention. So the psychological part is the attention. When we breathe and we pay attention to the breath, that attention is the psychological activity, psychological function. Okay. And the breathing itself is the physiological function. So if you can pay attention to the breath you are actually combining two activities. You are actually um, harmonizing the mind and the body. The body here represented by the breath and the mind 
by the attention. So two breathing and then attention. Breathing plus attention. Can you see this at the back? I'm sorry if it's not um, big enough. It's, it's red. This is breathing. This is attention. <coughs> eh? Maybe you can't see. Can you see now? This is red. This is breathing. This is attention. In the middle, it's called plus. Okay, it's a plus sign. <clears throat> this is a very important skill. You either have it or you don't have it. Okay. If you have it, you don't get easily irritated. If you don't have it, you will. Okay. If you know slight thing goes wrong, you get irritated all day. You won't be a happy person. So if you are kind to yourself and if you are kind to your friends, at least this is one of the options that you can use to help you and to help them. Now, I'm going to describe a technique. A technique is called 3R. 3R. The first R is called rec recognize, register. We can say register. The first R is register. <clears throat> the first R is register. The first R is register. The second R is release. The third R is return. I'm going to be explaining them. Register means recognize. What do we register? We register our emotion because we need to know what's happening. Register also means acceptance. Acceptance. Okay. It also means acceptance. When I breathe in, if I tell myself breathing in, I'm registering my breathing. When I'm agitated, if I say to you also, I think this is agitation. This is this is called register to register our feeling, to register our emotion. So instead of running away from it, like Charles Darwin said, fight and fly. Okay. Instead of fighting our own um, agitation, and also instead of running away from our agitation, what do we do? We recognize it so that we understand it. So that the first one is register. We register that and then we release it. We let go, we let it go. And return, where do we return? We return home, okay? It's not the home where you live with your parents. This is the home of your attention. We choose one particular object to place our attention. So here we are going to be choosing breathing. Okay, breathing as the center of our attention. As the center of our attention, um, volunteers, uh, can anyone help me draw? I'm very, I'm not. <laughs> I can't say I'm very bad at drawing. I just don't know it. <laughs> can, can someone help me? Or maybe some of the teachers, can you help me? Um, a spider. Yes, please. A spider, a spider web, and then, and a spider in the middle. 
Thank you. Okay, this is a spider web. This is spider. This is uh, a spider. A spider stays right in the middle. Okay. First, what what it does is that it forms its web. Then it doesn't stay at the corner. Instead, it stays in the middle and very quiet. Okay, very alert. The spider is very alert in the middle. Quiet and alert. But sometimes we call this relaxed and alert. That's the quality of the spider. Then, from time to time, you're going to see small insects falling. Okay, falling on this. Can you put some? This is a small insect, okay, uh, which has fallen on the web. The spider will just go and eat it. And what it does after that, it will return to the middle. That's what it means return. Return. To return to the middle. The middle is the home for the spider. The spider, okay, after it has formed its web, it makes the middle, the center, its home. So if you and me, if you want to know, if we want to know our emotion, if we want to be in touch with our emotion, we need to have, thank you, thank you, man. We need to have the center where we call home, okay? So this is home. Can you write this is home. This is home, okay? The insect, the smaller insect falling on the web, they are like distraction. Those distractions, you cannot ignore them. And you cannot run away from them. You have to recognize them and then let them go register and release. Register and release. So three R, a three R technique, register, release, and return, or recognize, release, and return. Breathing is the home, it's the center of our attention. We are going to be focusing on the breath. <clears throat> As we do so, we will be counting our breathing. As we breathe in, we'll be counting one, two, three, four, five. And then we breathe out. Again, we count one, two, three, four, five. One, two, five. You got to expect that your mind will wander. When your mind wanders, just accept it. Okay, this is wandering mind. It's okay. Don't blame yourself for that. You don't need to feel guilty. It's natural. Okay, you need to accept it. And don't ignore that either. Is it clear? The instruction, is it clear? What about you? Is it clear? Are you ready to do the practice? Now I want to ask you, how long you want to do this? Five minutes or one hour? How do I know? How, how many? <laughs> Volunteers, can you help? Okay, how long? Oh. Can we get a compromise in between, okay, between one hour and can you calm down a little bit and can you go up a little bit? Five minutes, can you can you increase a little bit? 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. 
I think I think we 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 begin we begin with six minutes, okay? We begin with six minutes, and uh, we'll be doing this a few more times today, okay? A few more times. But this one is called mindfulness, okay? The foundation of mindfulness. Just one more thing before we close our eyes and start focusing on our breath. You've got to learn how to relax your body. Okay, don't tense up. Just learn how to relax your body. If you want to lean on the chair, it's okay. But keep your feet together and keep your, your palms together. Relax your shoulders. Relax the muscles around your head, the muscles around your forehead. Relax them. And when you breathe, breathe slow and gentle. Okay. And you're going to be closing your eye. Um, <clears throat> just um, slightly, just slightly. While the um, Wendy or Grace, can you time? Okay, six minutes. Thank you. Okay, we can start now. Breathe in gentle and slow. Count one to five. As you breathe in, and the same when you breathe out. Thank you. <clears throat> Some of you may have been aware of uh, not just your breathing, but also your wandering mind. So we can see mindfulness of breathing, mindfulness of the mental activities. Then <clears throat> what the focus, what we focus on is already here, is breathing. It's the breath that we focus on. So what's the technique? What's the technique we use? We use three R. That's the technique that we use. What do we do when we do it? What's the uh, purpose? The purpose is to harmonize the mind and the body. Okay. To harmonize. The mind. mind in the form of attention, the body in the form of breathing. And what's the metaphor we use, what the simile? We use it a spider web. Okay. Has anyone got any question? How did you feel? How did you feel for the six minutes effort? Relaxing. Relaxing. Okay, what about you? Hmm? How, how, did, how did you feel? <coughs> I don't think that's helpful. Sleepiness is a sign that the body um, has a message to you. Well, the body has a message. So sleepiness is, is, uh, is, is a message that we need to read with compassion. So by recognizing the sleepiness, and if we just give ourselves maybe uh, two minutes, three minutes, trying to rest the mind. Breathe in and out, slow and gentle. 
that will recharge you. Okay. Okay. Uh, how do I meditate? Uh, morning uh, in the monastery in Oxford, morning 45 minutes, in the afternoon or evening 45 minutes. This is with a group, group meditators. Um, uh, differs from place to place. It ranges from one hour to I think five hours. A place called the Angu, they meditate, they can meditate up to five hours. And, um, um, I think later, you know, so we will be um, reading some books. One of those books, one of those books uh, claim the scientists they uh, they have taken you know, brain images of people who meditate. People who meditate just ten minutes a day, <coughs> they accumulate ten minutes, and once okay, you have clocked up maybe about eight hours, you don't get stressed out very often because you change your neuron, the, the, which area of your brain you're going to activate. If you are very stressed out, there's one area which is active. If you are calm, there's a different area which is active. So you need to switch okay, from uh, stress-related area to a calm-related area. Um, microphone. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. um, what is the preferred time for us to meditate? The proper time to meditate. No, the preferred time. The preferred time. Um, which time of the day? No. Um, how long? How long? But I think, um, in my ex ex experiment, I have tried three minutes also. You just have to do it every day, three minutes. And I have come up with, with a formula um, that I started in Madrid last year uh, during a meditation retreat. Just one minute meditation, but four times a day. Quattro Ministro Meditation. Four minutes meditation. The first thing, you wake up in the morning before you get up. Breathe in and out just for one minute. Okay. You start your day with calmness and focus. And the second one, after your breakfast, before you rush to school. Second minute. Because that's the time that you are so distracted. The third one, after your school, before you return home. And the last one before you go to bed. So just one minute each. Okay. okay. We have more time for questions. Um, maybe we need... Uh, yeah, microphone, come. Uh, Chris, uh, okay, okay. We, we. I'm actually very loud. <laughs> very good, Pete. <clears throat> well, we should start with a group meditation. That's where we draw inspiration. There is what we call group support. If you do it yourself, when you get busier, perhaps you will just drop it. You, have, you know, we have a lot of excuses not to do it than to do it. So, um, in Oxford, people drive one and a half hour to two hours just to meet here with me for 45 minutes. If they drive one hour, so a return journey is two hours. Because at home they can't do it. They can't do it. The environment and everything, it takes time to create. But if we can only meditate in a group, we become so dependent. So we need to learn how to meditate ourselves and take on those challenges, those excuses, those distractions. The main thing is to watch our mind, 
have mind. I haven't used one word here, a very important one. It's called non-judgmental mindfulness. Your mindfulness should be non-judgmental. Non-judgmental means if your mind wanders, don't say it's bad. If your mind is very concentrated, don't say it's good. Just observe what a wandering mind does and just observe what a calm mind brings. We trust the nature and it will tell you what is it. So, <clears throat> you will see in Myanmar itself, Min Gun Meditation Center, one of the uh, a dozen or so tradition here, they have individual hunts for meditators. So they just meditate alone. In other places like Mahasi, all group meditation. But you have individual walking meditation and you are supposed to be mindful even when you are alone. Yes. Unfavorable outcomes. How do you apply like mindfulness to like the moment you found out that something's going to go wrong? Very good. I mean, <clears throat> this is um, the kind of question which is um, relevant to all of us. <clears throat> yes. Um, kind of thing, you know, in education and also in working life. The first thing we need to know is the reaction that is coming out of our mind. We call this sometimes habitual reaction. When that reaction comes out, usually people try to suppress it because it's too much for them. It's too painful. They want to suppress it. But some people, instead of suppressing it, they either blame other people or they blame themselves. All of these, they make the bad feeling worse. <clears throat> so what we need to do is to breathe in and out and then recognize the emotion that is there, the negative emotion, maybe fear, maybe worry, maybe anxiety, we need to name them. We can name, register, release and return, register, okay, this is anxiety, this is anxiety, and release it. This is fear, this is fear, and release it, come back to breathing. If we do this, fear will still be there, worry will still be there, but it won't become overwhelming. This is the first thing we can do to ourselves. Then the next step what we can do is we can tell ourselves, I am not alone. Because at that time, we usually feel alone. Okay, I want to tell you that um, I think when I was 15, um, I failed my exam. And I didn't want to talk to people for five days. I didn't talk to anyone. I felt that I was alone. Actually, many people, many months, many novices just like me. But at that time, I couldn't connect with them. That is why I felt so bad. After five days, I realized there were many people just like me. So we need to tell ourselves, I am not alone. If Mm. And at that time, it, it, uh, it can also happen that whatever good, whatever achievement we have had, we, we just forget them. Usually we forget them. So it's good to make some attempt to reconnect with them, to revisit some of the, um, the achievement that we have had. Okay. Thank you. Can we meditate in any position? Um, Where, where are you now? Can we, can we meditate in any position? 
Sure, sure. Um, uh, there is a walking meditation. Walking meditation, a sitting meditation. Um, you wouldn't believe there's also lying meditation. Before you fall asleep, if you can, be mindful. There's eating meditation. I should describe this because very soon you're going to have your lunch. Eating meditation, we call mindful eating. Mindful eating. You can try this when you, for one bite, try to chew for about 20 times. If you do this, you're going to find out how impatient you are. And um, if you don't chew, don't chew properly, then your tummy will have to, ha to work harder to digest the food. So it's kinder to your body if you chew more. That's called mindful eating. And then when we, when we do eating, we prefer this uh, food to that food, this dish to that dish. A lot of judgmental mind. Then we can also observe those habits as well. If we observe those habits, if those habits don't become overwhelming, we will enjoy all the foods. Now we only enjoy certain food at a certain time. Our ability to enjoy the food is very limited. Why? Because our mind is judgmental. In his kingdom, the crown prince, and then he gave up everything. He gave up everything so that he can serve humanity beyond his kingdom. The seat of the seer prophesied that he would grow up to be a great leader, either a king. Now, of course, your father wanted you to be a king and reign his death not to become some wandering fortune teller. So he decreed that you should live in luxury and never see the world of pain and palace, and so never see the need for religion. And so you will silk and supple, sarangis and spice, sense was stated that you weren't satisfied. All you could do, questions, what is life? Why are we here? Is this all there is? And then one day, you ask, what lies beyond the palace wall? For the first time, you went out into the city in a gilded carriage. But you wanted to see the city by yourself, so you escaped into these alleyways. And you were horrified by what you saw. An old woman, wrinkled, toothless and crooked. A man eaten by disease, often and sweating and covered in boils. Then, by the points of a river, a funeral procession. The dead body was carried to the water's edge and laid gently on a pile of wood. And they trailed behind, crying and wailing in their grief. You stayed until the pup and watched as oily black smoke billowed down. It was the end of your innocence. There is no point to life. All that happens is that you get old, get ill, and die. <laughs> but on the way back to the palace, a holy man sits serenely at the side of the road, begging for arms. He had nothing but peace in that peace. He thought you must be the answer. And so the wheel turns. You left the palace in the dead of night and rode to the far reaches of the kingdom. You exchanged robes for rags, and in a forest you found a group of five holy men. They were naked and dirty, unkempt and scrawny. They said that by making their bodies suffer, their spirits could be freed. So you joined them and starved yourself until you were but still and new, yet still there were no answers. And the wheel turns. 
a young woman came to give an offering to the forest gods and thought she'd found a tree spirit. You took her food and ate your bill. You gave up a life of comfort and you gave up a life of suffering. But neither pleasure nor pain will give you the answer. And so it turns through birth, youth, and to this moment. It will turn on through old age, illness, and death. It will turn on through all your lives beyond, over and over again, in a never-ending and meaningless suffering. And you will learn nothing. Experience will not be the answer. So how long are you going to sit here? It's been 49 days. It's full moon again and the morning star is rising once more. What's this? A new idea form? What's this fleeting camp grasp? It's there on the edge of your consciousness that gets closer. Show me. A little way. You say life can never satisfy us because we always move. You say the only way to be peace is to stop. You say, the answer is to sit at the centre of the world, detached from the world that revolves around you. Only then can a person achieve peace. <coughs> Brave words, Siddhartha, but they are wasted. There is no one here to behold your enlightenment. No, the earth itself is his witness. She conspires with Siddhartha to reject me. He has awoken. He is enlightened. He is the Buddha.
Prince is called Slain. Then you stay with him elsewhere until he recovers. This is something the Prince need not know about.
spiritual energy. When you deny your body what it first wants, you set your mind free of the higher things. I desire comfort and warmth. And he loves to talk. I desire sleep. What do you desire most? I will always seem to be hungry. Well then, you know what you must do without. I starved myself for six years. At the end, I was eating three sesame seeds a day. And yet, the only thing that I could be certain about was that I was close to death. As I began to die, I thought of my son. And remembered a moment when I was about his age, the meaning of which I suddenly understood. It was the Palace Pride match. Everyone else was watching the festival, but I was seeing something different. Sweating men and animals, blind and white rugs being exposed to the sun, cut worms and insects. Everyone else was enjoying themselves, but I saw just suffering and death. I sat there for a long time, feeling very still. Only in that stillness could I see how things really were. This memory filled me with energy. If I'd already felt something of the peace I was seeking when just a child and well fed and clothed, I certainly did not need to starve myself to find it again. I decided to eat properly once more. I shall not get up from here until I found the truth I am seeking, that special awareness and enlightenment. But the mind has a terrible enemy. His name is Mara, and he seeks to tempt and destroy. First, he sent his beautiful daughters. Tempt him. Distract him. Make him desire you. But if I found enlightenment, I would go on to tell others how to escape his evil power. I had to find that moment of stillness again. So, ignore my daughters, or you shall feel the fury of my army. Hate, 
greed and stupidity that get the real turning point. You realize that whether your life is easy or hard, you can't escape death. But suddenly, what I've been searching for was revealed to me. If I did not fear death, death had no power. Watching the moon that long night, I slowly understood that the way to avoid suffering is to free yourself from wanting anyone or anything, to be ready always to give and receive. You can you can use another one. You can use another one. Mindfulness activities for um, children, and um, it basically talks about um, how children can focus um, and to calm themselves down if they're upset or have disappointments. Um, the passage we mainly focused on was the warrior two pose, and. Do you want to demonstrate? No. <laughs> oh, what? Um, so this is, um, it's like a yoga pose, and in yoga, warrior two pose is a popular transitional pose because it is the foundation for several other poses, and it helps the body flow from pose to pose. And the benefits of this um, warrior pose is that the warrior two pose makes your child's entire body feel strong, and it also, it is also a gentle hip stretch, and the warrior two pose builds mental strength, and yeah. Albert's going to demonstrate the pose. Wait, what? <laughs> okay. okay. We have to do it together. <laughs> Take a big step back with your right foot. Your front foot is pointing forward and your back foot is pointing um, So, begin in a mountain pose. Take a big step back. Just take a big step back with your right foot okay. and your front, front foot is pointing forward and your back foot is pointed toward the side of your mat. Yes. And bend your knee, front knee for, um, bend your front knee. Bend your front knee, yeah. <laughs> um, but make sure you can still see your big toe. <laughs> and then turn your hips to the long edge of your mat. So turn it to that side. Where's my mat? <laughs> Turn it to that side. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, and reach your arms straight out in opposite directions. And say, say I am strong. I am strong. <laughs> <laughs> and look over your front fingertips. Um, Call a fierce warrior too. Yeah. And now you do it to the other side. Who wants to go second? Today is Danny's birthday. Yay, it's my birthday! But tragically, his beloved cat died. And yeah. <laughs> Leave. Uh, uh, negative emotion. Negative emotion. <laughs> negative emotion. <laughs> and, and um, one week later, uh, he he learned he learned he learned how to overcome the negative emotions by uh, meditation. Negative. <laughs>
And we're going to have two groups represent the different kind of X. And the first one will be by Snow and Pooh. Um, Pooh. Uh, all right, please listen up. Uh, the book is The Fine Arts of Relaxation, Concentration, and Meditation. Uh, and then we found an interesting topic called Concentration While Walking. So, we spend most of our time walking, right? And we found a technique that can help us to use walking as a means for developing focus and concentration. So the first step is you have to walk five steps. I'll show you an example. Right? Then, Guys, be respectful yes, right. during your presentation. Thank you. So the second step is to start at one again, but this time come up to set six steps. Like right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. <laughs> Um, the third step is to begin at one again, but instead of um, the six steps like you did, is to add one more step and end at the right foot instead of the left foot. And you can continue counting this way uh, until you reach the number 10. And then you can repeat the entire sequence up to 10 steps as many times as you like. And if you lost track also, you can begin again at the cycle of five steps. Thank you for watching our presentation. Thank you. Um, filter. Identify what and who is important. Basically, it means to choose what's more important to you and to only choose that and get rid of all the unnecessary stuff that you don't want. After filter comes the second step. Which is prune. Prune is letting go of things that aren't important to you. And to the values of Buddhism is to let go of things that, uh, that, that don't matter to you and only the things that only affect you as a human being. Uh, the third thing is prioritize and you bring what matters the most to the, uh, to the front of your list. Last but not least, it's focus and um, when focusing, you do what you love and you do it really well. For example, I want everyone to close their eyes. Imagine that you're doing final speed and you have like a lot of stuff to study for. So using this method, first you filter it. You filter what you think is the most important and then you prune it. So you cut away all the edges of what you shouldn't be doing. Then you identify what you prioritize. And finally, we focus on that one thing only. And using this method, we can achieve success by focusing on mind and training it to be mindful. Thank you. This is not going to be like a play or anything, but this may, there may be an imperfect word, so just bear with us. So we chose our quote from this book, Siddhartha's Brain, The Science of Meditation, Mindfulness, and Enlightenment by James Kingsland. Early in the day, sitting cross-legged on the floor, monks and nuns in the monastery meditation hall chanted, Birth is Dokka, aging is Dokka, death is Dokka, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair is Dokka. Association with the dislike is Dokka. Separation from the like is Dokka. Not attaining wishes is Zoka. And this means the point is that no matter what everything, it's not going to be okay because the cycle of the suffering continuously will fall. There is a design from an ancient formula formulation, but there is a modern refrain. Life is a page and then you time. Okay, so sorry it was kind of imperfect, but yeah. The act of saying the words out loud is an acknowledgement of the lies we continually yell ourselves to get through the day. Thank you. Our book is called Self-Awareness by the Harvard Business Preview Press. First, we have these two. They're going to pretend to be two students who are meant to be studying for a test. Do 
should, we should study for a test coming up, you know. I'm gonna watch YouTube first and then study. Come on, we need to get sevens. <laughs> Two days later. Um, you got a seven, you got a zero. This is her student. She chose to procrastinate and play games or watch videos instead of studying, and therefore she failed her test. This student, on the other hand, is much more self-aware. She has a high degree of self-awareness, and therefore she plans ahead and starts in, in advance, and therefore she gets a better grade. This is a store clerk, and this is a client. Excuse me, ma'am, do you have water, do you have book, and do you have a pencil? In this first scene, the store client, uh, the store clerk is irritated, and she's getting mad at the the, the demanding client because the client is yelling at her and she's showing that she's not being very self-aware. Um, excuse me ma'am, do you have book, do you have water, and do you have a pencil? Yes, here you go. Yeah, you're in a hurry. Okay. In the second scene, this store clerk is much more self-aware because she's trying to understand how the client is feeling, trying to understand the situation the client is in, and therefore she's helping the client and that results in both of them being happier. Thank you. Thank you. From the book of a year of living mindfully, we picked the topic. We picked the topic eating mindfully because um, I don't really think anyone actually eats mindfully because I don't know, it's so usual that we don't actually pay attention to what we're eating and it deprives us of savoring the taste, the smell, the sound, etc. And eating when we eat mindfully. When we eat unmindfully, we eat fast, and it takes our body to know when it's full, so we usually overeat. And to prevent that, they're going to tell you some ways you can do that. When you start eating, then you should switch off the television in order to focus on what you're doing. For example, when you're eating the lungs, focus on the sourness, and when you're eating sweets, focus on the sweetness. No matter what food you're eating, you, you should focus on the taste. You should also notice every aspect of the food you're eating, like how your body reacts to your food. Is it good? Is it bad? Think about all your thoughts and emotions about that food and senses. It is very important to connect with the five senses, sight, sound, touch, taste, and smell when you eat. In order to do that, it is possible to try to be silent when you eat and focus on the taste of the food, noticing the saliva in your mouth and the anticipate. So this is the story of, uh, no, no, not a story, uh, The Emotion Life of Your Brain by Richard J. Davidson, PhD with Sharon Bailey. In page one, two, two, at paragraph two, the book uh, it explains about the connection between happiness and health. What the first sentence said: No single study can establish a scientific fact. Hence, the passage study can establish a word no army. Hence, the passage contains a blue so convincing that they had many studies to prove this right. He's going The studies from a science named David Snowman of the University of Kentucky resulted through this fact he is going to say the study result that the frequency of words or sentences which have positive emotion for the man uh, uh, they will live longer and the emotion which is negative they will live shorter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, guys, please be quiet. Um, so I hope you enjoy our performance, and yeah, thank you.
basically today um, he tells a book um, about emotional intelligence and mind my my mindfulness and it's by Harper Business the Youth Press. And we're gonna do a performance, so yeah. Alright kids, you have an exam tomorrow, so um, study hard. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? How is this kid so like calm? PMK, PMK meditates four times a day. For one minute, although four minutes a day is short amount of the time, it still helps him keep calm. As you can see, KK is calm about his exams while the others are panicking and fussing about it. When you need to focus, you need to, you can meditate because if you relieve stress and anxiety, therefore you are able to keep yourself calm in situations like this.